now this story from the Gospel according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us, thanks be to God. Now, during Advent, we had a Christmas tree right here in front of the pulpit that we used as a wishing tree. And everyone was invited to write their wishes on little, ho on little uh, slips of paper and to hang them on the tree. And this week, after all of the beautiful holiday decorations that I miss, uh, after they were all taken down, I had a chance to look over all of the wishes that you put on the tree. And I've placed some of them in the glass display cabinet in the parlor, uh, so it might be a little easier to read than when they were up here. Now, as I read through them this week, they pretty quickly started to sort themselves out into piles. There were wishes for health, either for the individual writing the card or for people they cared about. Things like, I wish to overcome anxiety and panic attacks. That our daughter's good health will continue. Strength and courage to battle cancer. There was another stack that was concerned with the wider world, things like an end to gun violence, a year of cooperation in Washington, which may be the strangest and most outrageous wish of all, or one for jobs for all who need them. A few were about the church, a, a few were more spiritual in nature, to defy the darkness, to slow down and live in the moment, letting go of past resentments, there were many, many about family. Some of you just hoping for a good time around the holidays, others expressing deeper concerns. For my mother to truly understand me and want to repair our relationship. That the love of God will live in my son's hearts. A companion with whom to share my later years. And one simply said to be a loving and giving grandmother. Quite a few of you asked for some general good, for success in my next professional journey, to make a difference to someone, for a better life. And there were a, a number of you who simply wished for peace on earth. And three of you asked for something very specific. One, being able to find a decent, affordable car. Two, computer games. And number three, a cat. And that last one was written in crayon, and I intend to keep it and hang it up in my office beside other things that have been created by kids. I'm also really curious to know whether that person got their wish. Now, I always enjoy exercises such as this, which give me insights into what's going on in your lives, what concerns you, what you hope for, what you enjoy and delight in. And so thank you for sharing and trusting these wishes to be a part of the worship of this congregation. And just to know, I sorted through the ones I put out. Any that it was kind of obvious who wrote them or it was more specific, I didn't put publicly out. But Hopefully this Advent and Christmas, you heard God's affirmation of you and your wishes. Because we worship a God who loves us unconditionally and desires that we be our very best. God wants us to shine and radiate with glory. This ever-loving, welcoming, merciful God is like the good parent 
who affirms and encourages us in a way that allows us to develop and strengthen our own identity. God's love is that ever-present support and security that allows us to thrive. This message is reaffirmed in today's story of Jesus' baptism and in the church's history and tradition around this sacrament. Today, we will remember our baptismal vows and as we do annually, recommit ourselves at the start of this new year. In our stories, water plays an important supporting role, and I was worried Sophia was going to have my whole sermon. So, Water is the force of chaos which must be tamed by the divine order. It is flood, storm, and tsunami. It is leviathan, dragon, and seven-headed beast. But water is also the root of the exodus, of liberation from slavery when God parts the sea. It is life in the wilderness. It is the symbol of justice and righteousness. Let wa justice roll down like waters. It's the image of peace and tranquility. Lead me beside the still waters. Restore my soul. It is the water of the womb which nurtures us, and it is the living water, the font of spiritual energy which Jesus offers to all who thirst. And so, therefore, it's no wonder that John goes out into the wilderness to preach and to baptize in the River Jordan. And his actions are full of symbolic meaning. He, in his own person, was an image of the Hebrew prophet Elijah and his strange dress and his way of life. The wilderness setting recalled the ancient journey of the Exodus and how that was a time of the formation of a new people from a band of freed slaves. And being baptized in the river recalled God's great acts of liberation and salvation when God parted the sea and the Jordan River, allowing the people to cross unharmed. And so all of these things were behind John's actions, and John's actions were in defiance of the orthodox religious system that controlled the people's spiritual life through a set of clearly defined rituals which had to be performed in the temple in Jerusalem. In defiance of this tradition, John goes out into the wilderness and proclaims that forgiveness of sin could be found there, completely apart from the temple. One didn't need to go and sacrifice. One didn't need to pay the temple tithe. One didn't need to exchange money and go through the whole system at the temple. One could simply come out here into the barren waste and confess and repent, and one's sins would be forgiven. But to be baptized by John was, meant that one was to become part of a new community that was awaiting the coming reign of God. It was to join a people with a vision of how God intends the creation to be. Conversion and forgiveness of sin are conditions of entering into that new community. And so even Jesus comes to be baptized by John, and it is this act which inaugurates his ministry. Now in the Gospel of John, which I preached on last year on this Sunday, it's a dramatic moment when Jesus is revealed as the fulfillment of prophecy, the one who will usher in the reign of God. In Mark's story, the, the heavens are ripped open and the Spirit descends dramatically, and, but Luke's story is not quite as dramatic. Because Luke has already introduced all of those key theological themes about Jesus, already told us who Jesus is, that Jesus is filled by the Spirit. And Luke did that in his birth stories. He uses angelic announcements, prophetic utterances, miraculous births, all to tell us who Jesus is and that he is animated by God's Spirit. So when Luke gets to the baptism, it's a gentler affair. After the baptism, Jesus goes to pray, and it is during the prayer that he, the voice from heaven speaks and that the Holy Spirit descends. Now, the early church adopted baptism, this symbolic act, as its initiation rite. To be baptized was to acknowledge that one was part of this new community that lived according to the will of God. Christian baptism had two new elements, unlike the way people had baptized before. 
First, Christians baptized in the name of Jesus. It meant that the one being baptized confessed that Jesus would be the model for her life, that she would follow after and imitate Jesus. And the second change, according to the stories in the New Testament, was that the converts were filled with the Holy Spirit, much as Jesus had been. We see this at Pentecost, with Cornelius the centurion, with the Ethiopian eunuch. In each essence, in essence, each Christian baptism was a reenactment and a participation in the baptism of Jesus. So in your own life, your baptism stands as a significant providential sign of God's work in and through you. For the church as a community, the baptism is a sign of remembrance that connects each individual baptism with all other baptisms and ultimately with the baptism of our Lord. And the baptism of Jesus is that great historic sign that God broke into human history, God became a human being, was filled with the Spirit, and heard God's voice from heaven say, this is my Son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. And so our baptisms reenact all of that. Each of us who has been touched by the waters of baptism and have encountered God's Spirit. And in that moment, even if you didn't hear it audibly, the words were true of you as well, that you are God's child, that you are beloved, that God is pleased with you. And so we all are connected through this one ritual, calls to mind St. Paul's words, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, or these others which may have been part of the earliest baptismal confession of the church. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And so this day we are called to remember. We remember our confession of faith and this symbol of initiation into a new community, a community that longs for God's reign on earth as it is in heaven, a community that identifies the life of Jesus as the way of God's reign and commits itself to living as Jesus lived, empowered by God's Spirit. It is a significant moment that we remember. And in a while, we will begin that service of remembrance and recommitment. And during that time, you will be called upon to remember your own baptism and to, and to commit and your commitment to the way of Jesus. And this year, I'd also like to remind you that it is important to remember that your calling to follow Jesus is larger than just this congregation. By joining a church, you have committed to be a disciple of Jesus not only when we are gathered for worship service, business, or fellowship, you have committed to be a disciple of Jesus in all aspects of your life. See, what we do here every Sunday is not church. What we do all day every day is church. This is simply our weekly worship gathering, but we are always the church. And so you realize then that this particular congregation ministers at UNO and the University of Nebraska Medical Center through Zayson Company and Rockbrook Camera, at Union Pacific and Mutual of Omaha, in the Omaha Public Schools and at the Urban League, through the state legislature and the U.S. Air Force, and a vast array of institutions, corporations, businesses, nonprofits, schools, clubs, neighborhoods, families, and friendships. So when we remember and recommit ourselves to the church, I'm talking about our entire way of living and not just what we do in this building or through the programs that this congregation sponsors. Today, remember the covenant you have made and examine how this year that covenant can be fulfilled in all aspects of your life. This is not a duty, but a joyful, loving response to our relationship with God. Our divine parent affirms and encourages us. God grounds our identity and purpose 
and gives us the support and security we need to thrive. For God has said to each and every one of us, you are my child, you are beloved, I am pleased with you. It is a tradition in many uh, church, Christian churches on the baptism of the Christ Sunday to renew the baptismal vows. It's a great experience at the beginning of the new year to kind of recommit ourselves in the new year. And, and since I've been here, we've done this every year, although I know it's still a kind of a new tradition for us. And so you'll need the purple insert sheet, and you'll also need the black uh, hymnal because we'll use it for a couple of things here in a moment. So let us now enter into this time of reaffirmation of our baptismal covenant. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say we will. We, we will. will. Let us join in professing the Christian faith. You'll find that UCC statement of faith number 885 in the back part. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of the discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto you. Amen. Let us join also in confessing our covenant with one another. The covenant that we see found inside the back of the back. We are thankful for life, for Jesus our Lord, for the courage and vision of our church founders. In gratitude we covenant with God and with one another, seeking as a church and as individuals to be faithful to God's will. We pray for hearts that open, minds that understand, and lives that serve. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Creator, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan River to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare God's work to the nations, God's glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit. 
and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sin, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, our Mother and Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant, God. We, we give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, continuing to grow as a Christian through prayer, study, reflection, and worship, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ.